hearty welcome to all the divyavani tv viewers i greet and bless all of you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit <laughs> God has blessed us to listen to his word a beautiful word and that is taken from the gospel of Matthew chapter 19 verses 16 onwards then someone came to him and said teacher what good deed must i do to have eternal life and he said to him why do you ask me about what is good there is only one who is good If you wish to enter into life keep the commandments he said to him which ones and Jesus said you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness honor your father and mother also you shall love your neighbor as yourself the young man said to him I have kept all these what do I still lack Jesus said to him if you wish to be perfect go sell your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven then come follow me when the young man heard this word he went away grieving for he had many possessions the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ my dear brothers and sisters in christ jesus today i would like to reflect with you all a beautiful theme called the human fall and divine pull the human fall how god could lift up that man with his divinity in other words the human fall divine pull where to focus and we have a beautiful episodes in our own bible we see the ancient understanding the myths tell us the stories all have kind of the fall of human kind unfortunately every myth tells also also that all the stories of the human fall have the tragic end but when we come to our bible of our god Though God had punished Adam and Eve because of the disobedience that was just for a while, but then, my dear brothers and sisters, God lifted them up once again. He brought them back. He restored them back to His relationship, the covenantal relationship. I would like to begin with a small story. A boy was flying a kite, and because of the windy day, the kite was. flying very high and went so soaring higher and higher finally the boy could not see the kite and it became invisible in the air a man was passing by he saw this boy was holding the one side of the thread and the man asked this boy boy what are you trying to do he said i am flying kite but where is the other end which is in, invisible where is the other end and the boy said immediately i am holding one side of the thread believing and trusting that there is kite on the other end of the thread and the man could not believe and the boy said i am holding tightly i can feel the pull of it the kite was pulling me because i am releasing the thread so i can feel the pull of it my dear brothers and sisters in christ jesus how could god pull us out how could god pull up the adam and eve when they were disobedient and how could they fall we have the book of genesis chapter 3 verse 21 where when because of the disobedience of adam and eve our first parents what did god do and he said beautiful here 
and the lord god made garments of skins for the man and for his wife and clothed them a franciscan scholar richard rohr he differentiates between the human love and divine love and explains that human love is the energy that brought the fallen man or the woman the universe to be strong and it binds together that's the human love he is the one the energy that brought the whole universe into being and it binds together whereas the human love is whatever energy we use to help the divine love achieves its purpose how do we cooperate with our human fall the human love that brings the purpose of god's creation of the universe therefore brothers and sisters as i said we are into the human world also the divine world how do we accept appreciate our own self whenever we have a great fall and we have quite too many episodes in our bible and one of the episodes is the story of david scandalous man a great fall he had but how could god really lift him up made him after his own heart gave him the kingdoms and gave him the life to rule the world gave him the energy to rule everything and he was lifted up he was pulled up though he had a great fall that's what the beauty of our god in the bible is not a tragedy end god was punishing the human kind and god's heart was grieving over it as we read in the book of genesis chapter 6 verse 6 but god once again because of the grace attached to that punishment that punishment was only for a while it was not a lasting punishment and i would like to say one more incident that happened a woman came to me for some time some time back and she was in complete depression when she came to my office and asking father i would like to talk to you and share with you and the moment she began sharing her own uh, problems the issues in the family and i after listening for quite some time then i asked her from the scale 1 to 10 what is the rate of your problem on the scale 1 to 10 or 0 to 10 she said number 8 then i asked her shall we go to the other side of a uh, window then i took her to the window side and asked her look outside focus outside not inside focus outside through the window and for 2 minutes i uh, made her to look out look around and she saw everything then i brought her back to the place where we were sitting and uh, sharing then after that she became silent and i uh, immediately asked her now after seeing outside of yourself and where do you place your problem on the scale of 0 to 10 she said 2 i was surprised and in, in fact i was shocked and asked her what made you to say just 5 minutes before you said a on the scale of 0 to 10 8 you said now you are saying 2 then this young lady began to say father i was looking outside of myself my focus was not on my self but focus was outside and there i explored everything now my the problem the issue that i was busy with became to only 2% dear brothers and sisters how could god once again reveal to each human kind to come out of one self and that's what when we explore our fallings we explore our problems when we explore our human frailties limitations weaknesses and focusing on god through our conversation and then god is lifting every human person when who is fallen through someone else and also we have beautiful person the universal saint called the second christ the francis of assisi what a fall he had because of his riches 
his father was peter bernardone was very strong on him that his son should become a knight he should become a famous person and he was ex uh, spending a lot of money on him though he was a rich person but francis fasis he was not for that when he had a call asking francis francis whom do you want to serve he said master or the servant he said the master go back get back where you came from and begin your new life <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the journey of Saint Francis of Assisi was tremendous. He could give up all his worldly possessions, because though he was busy with these possessions, but when he heard the call of God, and the simple question that he asked God was, "Lord, what do you want me to do?" Lord, what do you want me to do? A beautiful prayer of Saint Francis of Assisi was, "Lord, what do you want me to do?" and there he had the revelation and he began to live his life change his life convert himself change over he took a u turn of him his life and it came to a point where he had to give up everything because he knew from his within his heart he was disturbed and therefore he had to give up everything and we know the beautiful episode or the story the incident that happened in the bishop's court pope honorius where he was francis came to complain to the bishop that he wanted to give up everything worldly possessions and embrace only Christ and there his father peter bernardone came over there and there in francis the beautiful uh, incident was that telling the bishop over there in the bishop's court no more peter Dona peter bernardone is my father but our father who is in heaven brothers and sisters conversion through conversation when we erase the past we erase we embrace the present therefore we have the life every moment that god comes to us and ask us and helps us to raise, uh, raise our life from our fallen world fallen state but how many of us really enjoy that god's call invitation and also there he is with us to taking us lifting us from our fallen state and i would come come to story of we have the john's gospel chapter 8 the woman caught in adultery a beautiful episode over there once again and we know very well that familiar story how jesus lifted up that woman who was caught in adultery three incidents over there people jesus in the middle and woman the other end people began to accuse her saying that she has to be punished and these people the pharisees only targeted the law they were going by the law oriented people but not the person oriented and they were they were they were busy in bringing this section to this woman they are targeting the woman to destroy her life and jesus in the middle was watching one side and the other side the woman beautifully said once again that she lost her hope and she gave up her hope that she was just waiting ready to die waiting for the last stone to fall on her and killing her and there jesus once again looking at the woman looking at the people there said woman have no one condemned you she said no one sir and he said neither do i con condemn you i understand accept you please go and sin no more saint augustine of hippo would say looking at this parable or the episode miserable woman facing the merciful god and the conversation how jesus could lift up that fallen woman over there 
and Jesus was the person oriented. Jesus was busy only looking at that woman, knowing her life, that she would come up with a new life. Jesus was busy only raising her up. She had a bright future. She had a new life. And that's what our God all the time, brothers and sisters, lifts us up. But we need to take the initiative. We need to cooperate with God's call. We need to cooperate with God's conversation. And then when we focus on God, He will lift us up. He will bring us once again in God's kingdom. He will show us the reality, what's happening in the world. Most of us, dear brothers and sisters, do not realize that every walk of our life, we do fall and we do rise again because of God's mercy and God's providential care. And we have also the Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, the story of Zacchaeus. He had, he was fallen of the possessions. He was fallen of the riches. But when God, Jesus, visited him, and there once again, the Zacchaeus realized this is worldly world, the wealthy world. Then Jesus lifted him up and made him, gifted that house as the house of salvation. And we have also St. John's Gospel, chapter 4, Jesus and the woman of Samaria, Samaritan woman's story. And Jesus, the woman knew. In the beginning, though, she failed to understand that Jesus was a prophet. But we know later, when we read, we find that Jesus, she found out this man was not an ordinary prophet. And Jesus had to say in St. John's Gospel, chapter 4, verses 14 onwards, if we read, there he talks so beautifully. But those who drink the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water. And I will give them will never be thirsty. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Brothers and sisters, our Conversion takes place through conversation, through dialogue. But how do we pass? And Jesus saw this woman caught in adultery with his mercy. He erased the past and told the woman, run the present, raise the present. God is not busy with our past sins. God is not happy with our fallen world. God does not want us to remain all the time in the past. And we have beautiful reading or the text from the prophet Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 11. He says beautiful here, Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from evil ways. For why? Will you die, O house of Israel? So God is not pleased or God does not want us to be all, remain all the time in our fallen state. And God wants us to be out of our fallen world. Therefore, we have St. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10. There once again Jesus tells, I have come into the world to give life to the fullness. It's not 50-50 life that God wants us to give, but to the 100% of our life should be all the time be happy and enjoy God's presence. But in the reality of the world, my dear brothers and sisters, how God really encourages us, walks with us, appreciates our journey when we are busy with God's world. Divine love is the energy for all of us, for all the humankind, those who fall. Divine, we have also the another episode Luke's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 38 onwards. The woman, a sinful woman, came with costly perfume and washed the feet of Jesus, bows before his feet, and washing the feet and wiping with her own air, and Jesus forgives. So God, or Jesus, does not want any humankind to remain in the fallen world, a fallen state. And he made quite many saints also, the world-class saints, not the worldly saints. Before they were saints, they were worldly people, busy with the possessions, busy with all these 
anxiety of the world, but Jesus lifts us up. God raises up to be with Him, to get back to Him, to be with Him in, in His relationship. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, what is that main thing blocking us not to be happy with God? What are the ways where we can really come up to God and converse with God, have a dialogue with God, where we can be all the time happy with our life, with our family life, with our journey, every walk of our life. How could you allow God, invite God to lift us up when we, are, when, when we fall? There are so many ways we can raise our life up. There are so many means where we can raise our life up. The one important thing is the prayer. Prayer is not just the dialogue with God because I all the time ask, ask myself, prayer is in me, but am I in the prayer? Most of us realize the prayer is in us. Prayer is in us. We do pray. We are happy with our prayer life, but am I in the prayer? If I am in the prayer, and I am sure I enjoy God's mercy. When I am in the prayer, God, I do believe that God is lifting me up. He makes my life very light. And we have Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 28. All those who are heavily burdened, come to me, I will give you rest. The beauty of it is that we, are, we need the rest from these worldly possessions. We need the rest in the godly possessions. A young rich man wanted to have eternal life. And Jesus said, go sell everything and share with the others. When we share what we have, when we give to the others what we have more than enough, then God is there with us, making our life all the time lighter and lighter day by day. As I said in the story, the kite was invisible for the man, for the boy, but then he could feel the pull of it. And we do believe that God is all the time, uh, our pull, God is all the time pulling us out of our fallen world. Let us pray. May God bless all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.